Hey guys, my name is Joshua Javahiri, and uh, today we're going to talk a little bit about the content browser in the Unreal Development Kit. Uh, it's Epic's new um, uh, package management uh, tool right in uh, the Unreal Editor. And uh, we're going to talk about um, what packages are. Um, it's an important part in uh, art asset creation in Unreal Editor. Uh, we're going to talk about how to create a package. We're going to go through the process of actually creating a package, saving it, uh, modifying it, uh, editing the subfolders, and some common practices in organization of packages. We're also going to talk about uh, searching packages and uh, adding tags and collections to the content browser. And we're also going to talk about customizing the content browser. All right, so we're going to load up the editor now, and um, we notice that we are presented with the start page here. I'm just going to close it out, and uh, I can't stand this four-paned view, so I'm going to do that. It's just a weird thing in mind. So yeah, we go up here to the content browser button, and uh, that'll open up our content browser, and uh, immediately we see the screen, and it's quite, sort of organized um, in a fairly simple way. We have the previews of the assets in all the packages uh, right in the middle. We have some search options at the top and we have our package structure uh, on the left hand side. So what is the package exactly? Well uh, in Unrelated to 3 um, packages are sort of glorified zip files. Um, they contain all the art assets. So let's go ahead and create a quick test package. Uh, like I said you can't have a package without anything in it so Let's go ahead and create a new material and we'll put it in a new package. So I right click in some empty space here and I hit new material. And I'm presented with this dialog box. Now I'm gonna enter a package that doesn't exist. So I'm gonna call it test package underscore 01. And I'm gonna give it a group of materials because the asset that I'm creating is a material and I want to organize my package uh, in a certain this in this way. So the name of the actual material will be test material um, underscore mat. So I hit OK and you'll notice that my package on the left has been created with a subfolder called materials and I have the preview right here in the middle of everything inside this package, currently just this material. Now I can double click on this and it'll open up the material editor conveniently. Uh, not interested in this right now. So this kind of works for any type of asset that you want to create. So for example, if I want to create a um, visual effect, I can go in here and uh, select a uh, new particle system. And as long as my package name is correct, I'll give it a group name of uh, VFX uh, dot to uh, denote a another subgroup um, uh, test effect, and uh, I'll give it a name of test effect underscore VFX. I hit OK, and uh, what you notice is that under the same package, I have another subfolder called VFX, and in, within that, another subfolder called test effects, and that's where my actual particle effect is located. If I open that. So I can go ahead and create a new particle sprite emitter, and this is my visual effect. Cool thing in Cascade is you can typically save thumbnails um, of some of the assets you create. So if I go into the top left corner of, for example, the material editor, or, or in this case, the Cascade editor for visual effects, I can save the thumbnail of this effect. And what you'll notice is that when I go back to my uh, my uh, test effects subfolder in my test package. I now have a preview that I saved myself um, in the content browser. This is useful for obvious reasons. Now I've gone ahead and I've saved my test package in a folder called test folder that I've created in the content directory. So here's test folder and uh, test package 01. This is my package. Um, and I did that by right clicking and I'm going to save it brings me up with a dialog box uh, if I don't have I haven't saved it initially and it allows me to navigate to where I want to save it again um, organizational purposes for organizational purposes you, you can you can organize your packages however you want 
but typically we by convention will save it into the content directory um, so yeah I have this folder called test folder with a package called test package I have subgroups within this it's a good idea to keep things as organized as possible but as you'll see uh, soon the content browser actually allows for some really 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 cool features um, in terms of search searchability so we're gonna go ahead and talk about that uh, next so uh, Unreal Editor, the, the content browser is actually a pretty pretty new feature. Before we had this thing called the generic browser, which didn't allow you to do a lot of the cool things that the, the content browser allows you to do now. Um, the main power, the, the cool, the really cool thing about the content browser is the ability to search and to create uh, what they call collections uh, in Unreal. So if you go to the, the right hand side, there's this little tab arrow. We expand it and it brings up this thing called the tag manager. Now, um, tagging allows you to tag specific assets um, so that you can search for them easily later. I'm going to go ahead and revert to the root um, folder um, in my test package, and uh, you notice that uh, I see both the material and the visual effect that I created. I'm going to go ahead and create a new tag, and I'm going to call it. Um, I'm going to give it a group of uh, example folder our example group, excuse me, and uh, the name I'm going to call it uh, test tag. I go ahead and create that and you scroll all the way to the bottom and, oh sorry, it's, it's alphabetically ordered. So under the example group I have this test tag. Now the way that you add a tag to a certain asset is you select the asset that you want and then you click on the little plus sign and that adds the tag so you can view all the applied tags in this applied tags dialog so this particle system only has one tag applied to it now we can go ahead and add other tags that make sense and this is a good practice to do for example um, maybe um, if this was a trail effect we could add this tag to it uh, maybe uh, effects. Um, this could be maybe an, a, a decoration effect, uh, maybe an outdoor decoration effect. So you can add as many tags as you want arbitrarily. And um, the cool thing is when we when we want to search for a specific asset, we can search by tag. So let's go ahead and do a search for the test tag that I just created. And there you go. You notice that the autofill um, added the group name and then and then the uh, the name of the tag. So it's a very um, straightforward and useful tool and uh, great for organizational purposes. So last thing I want to talk about are collections. Um, I'm going to get rid of this search criteria so that uh, everything shows up again. So uh, collections are just sort of like grouped, um, ordered folders that you can put, uh, you know, arbitrarily anything that you want. So I'll go ahead and create a new collection called test collection and uh, you'll see a new folder pops up and I'm gonna go ahead and go to my package and I'm just gonna drag um, or select my uh, two uh, shift select my two uh, new uh, art assets and I'm just gonna drag them right into the test collection and you'll notice that uh, no matter where I'm navigating now let's say I'm in this random package I can always click on test collection and jump right to these two art assets so another quick way of uh, reaching what you want to um, where you want to get to uh, and now that we've talked about collections and tagging I'm just going to go over quickly some of the preview uh, options that you have uh, in the content browser so let's uh, navigate to some uh, another random package so here's a random package um, you'll notice that maybe my content browser um, initially looks a little bit different than yours um, and you'll notice these options on the bottom here. So we have these different views. We have the list view, we have the horizontal split view. I prefer this one, the vertical split view, because it gives you not only the names of the assets um, in alphabetical order, but it also gives you another window with the preview of them. Uh, and in this window here, we can actually slide this uh, to get larger previews if you want. Uh, and I believe if there's an animation uh, within the material, you can actually hover over the material and it'll uh, give you sort of a preview of whatever animation it is. Uh, to see this for example, it's giving a, 
uh, sort of a looks like a sine wave uh, kind of a hum on and off uh, animation so you can kind of see that preview when you hover, uh, hover over it. You can also use these pre uh, presets um, I prefer leaving it at probably about 128 just for my purposes and you can also use this sort feature uh, to sort by tag name type um, and it's very straightforward so yeah, I hope this helps uh, anybody out there looking to uh, learn a, bit, a little bit more about the concept browser. Um, feel free to email me if you have any questions. Thanks.